I'm Courtney Bird. I'm the vice chair, and I'm um, chairing tonight's uh, Wednesday regular meeting, Wednesday, uh, September the 1st of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. And before I start being a history buff, I want to acknowledge that uh, this is the 81st anniversary of the beginning of World War II uh, when the German uh, army invaded Poland, September the 1st, 1939. It was a six year war that took millions of lives and forever altered the uh, nature of, and dynamic of human relations and brought it, ushered in the atomic age and has changed the dynamics of uh, uh, nation states. So it had an enormous effect. And on a better note, in 1971, September the 1st, saw the Pittsburgh Pirates field an all black team in playing the Fitz Pittsburgh uh, Pirates. I'm sorry, the uh, Philadelphia Phillies. So on that note, we'll begin. Um, first of all, um, all members of the commission are present except for Jamie Matthews and uh, Maury Hollowhawks. And so uh, in under my authority vested in me as the uh, vice chair, I'm going to appoint ha Matt, uh, Pat Harris up to be a full voting member of the commission. And I also like to recognize our staff, uh, Jen, McKay, uh, Jen Lincoln, Kevin, Alyssa, Amy, and our recording secretary, Kristen. Um, this open meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission is being conducted via Zoom and is also being broadcast on cable channel 15 and streamed online at www.fctv.org. For those who want to view the meeting but do not want to participate, we suggest viewing on FCTV. <laughs> Members of the public who want to make comments or ask questions during the meeting may join the meeting as attendees which will allow you to uh, submit written comments and questions via the chat function and also to see and hear the meeting in real time. The, the link and the instructions for joining the meeting are listed in the agenda posting and be, can be found uh, on the Falmouth Mass website, www.falmouthmass.gov, conservation, and FCT will also be posting information and how to access the Zoom meeting during the broadcast. This meeting is being recorded, so please be aware that you as a panelist can be seen and can be heard, and unless you have muted your microphone and or camera, and that includes any open windows on your computer if you use the screen share function. So please therefore act accordingly. The basic rules are that, um, uh, before turning to the first item on the agenda, I want to review some basic rules, and that is, number one, as chair, I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. Please remember to unmute your microphone and speak clearly. When done, remute yourself. Please do not speak unless recognized by the chair. Uh, if you are a meeting attendee and want to ask a question or make a comment, please use the chat function. After each presentation, the chair will ask staff members for questions or comments. The chair will then ask for commissioner comments or questions. After the presentation and staff and commission uh, discussion, the chair will ask staff member to read any questions or comments typed into the Zoom chat by members of the public. If someone wants to speak to an issue at that point, notify us via the chat function and you will be made a participant. You, should, you will have three minutes to make your presentation and I will strictly enforce that. And the key item here is that this is, when you make comments, you stick to the fact of that this is a conservation commission. We are dealing with conservation commission regulations. We don't deal with zoning or other things. And so keep your comments to the point. And if you stray off that, you will hear from me. Okay. <laughs> And finally, all votes for this remote meeting will be taken via roll call, and I will call out your, the name of each member and ask you to repeat your name before stating your vote. Okay, first order of business is uh, minutes. Do we have minutes to uh, vote on at this point? I don't believe so. No, Mr. Chairman, uh, no court. Um, Kristen had a few questions last week and I was unable to respond to her till 
like right before this meeting. So she'll be getting those to you. Okay. That was on my, that was my fault. Okay. No problem. Second uh, item on there is a request for continuance under a notice of intent. John Gracchi Sr. and Diane Gracchi, 23 Southview Way, East Falmouth, for permission to construct a pier deck and privacy fence and to stall mitigation and restoration planning. So, Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until, I believe it's September 29th. And just for the and just to let the board know, I know this is being continued. Uh, it's been continued a bit. We did um, meet. Alyssa and I met with Brian Wall and Matt Costa yesterday to kind of talk over the outstanding issues. Um, I think we have uh, a path forward, so we're just waiting for the revised plan. So, okay, we have a motion. So I make a motion to continue this project until September 29th. Second, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion in the second to continue this uh, until the, what, 29th? I'm sorry. Correct. Okay, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote and I will call your names. Uh, Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Bird, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Uh, Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. Motion carried unanimous. Okay, moving on. The next item is request for determination of applicability. Under a request for determination of applicability in RDA, the applicant is asking the Conservation Commission to decide if the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetlands and Protection Act and or the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw apply to the proposed project. A negative determination is that the provisions of the act or bylaw do not apply, therefore it can proceed. A positive determination is that the provisions of the act or bylaw do apply, and therefore the act, act applicant will have to file a notice of intent if he or she wants to go forward. In the simplest terms, a no means yes. Okay, first request for determination is Lara Dearman, 41 Madeline Road, East Falmouth, for permission to remove a concrete pad and replace with grass and to add crushed stone on top of an existing concrete pad and to plant eight to 10 uh, hydrangea plants within an, an existing planting bed. Uh, uh, Jen, or who is doing, I'm sorry, Kevin. I'll take it, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, staff recommends a negative two under both the state and under the bylaw and resource area boundaries are not confirmed. So move, Gladfelter. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve uh, uh, staff's recommendation of a, that they can go ahead with the project. Um, Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Uh, Bird, aye. Um, let me, hold on, let me. Uh, Kevin. O'Brien, I. Maury. I'm sorry, Maury isn't here. Pat. Harris, I. Peter. Walsh, I. Steve. Pat and I. Okay, motion adopted. Um, moving on. The next thing is uh, that we are uh, going to move to is notices of intent. Uh, request for a hearing of a notice on intent. So the um, all hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. And our first hearing is Dick J. Bossy, uh, 203 Chappaquoit Road, West Falmouth, Mass, for permission to renovate an existing single family house garage and decks and all associated demolition, clearing, utilities, dune restoration, and landscaping. Um, and who is presenting? Mr. Uh, Chairman, I've promoted Tim Santos up to a panelist along with the applicant, DJ Bossy, and 
Darshini Joseph. Correct, Tim. Is there anybody else? I believe that's it. Okay, thank you. Tim, you're on deck. Uh, Good evening. For the record, Tim Santos from Holmes and McGrath representing the applicant. Um, With your permission, I will share my screen. Can everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Again, the the applicant, DJ Bossy, is on, as well as the landscape architect, uh, Sheeny Joseph, who will be able to answer any questions that the board might have um, in a little while. Property is located at 203 Chappaquoit Road in West Falmouth. Uh, We have Buzzards Bay to the west of the property, and to the east is West Falmouth Harbor. The resource area is on or within 100 feet of the property, our land under the ocean. There's a coastal beach associated with Buzzards Bay on this side, Ripraff being Coastal Bank, um, pretty much the entire property. There's a coastal dune. There are two isolated vegetated wetlands. And to the east of the property, going towards West Falmouth Harbor, is a salt marsh. And the entire property is located in land subject to coastal storm flowage. It's currently developed with the, an existing single family home, porches and decks, as well as a garage and a long pier off the back out towards the harbor. We are here tonight. Let me just get to the screen if you don't mind. We're here tonight with a what, I, what I'm going to call a quasi tear down and rebuild project. Um, the existing home, we're looking to um, crib it up, raise it up, and slide it to the right and left and dry piles. The new home will be uh, raised above the elevation 18 of the velocity zone to a new finished floor of 22. And we're going to demolish the existing garage out back and construct a dry piles and construct a a new garage. Um, All the roof runoff from the new house will be diverted to dry wells as shown on the plan. The the new house will be tied into the existing septic, Title V septic system that's on the lot. Um, the, the, we did provide a uh, calculation of development on the lot from the 2004 compliance plan versus the 2021 plan. And there's, there'll be an actual reduction, of, I believe about 23 square feet plus or minus reduction of impervious overall. Um, the existing driveway will remain as well. Um, there was some discussion with staff today in regard to the limit of work asking if we could kind of bring it in closer to the house. Um, we have spoken with the the, the contractor and we can definitely, I, I believe this is about 20 feet. We can bring it into 20 as well as the back into 20, uh, excuse me, into 10. We'll bring it, we'll revise it and make it smaller um, to the to the south. We'd like to keep it where it is in order to be able to, to once they crib up the house, be able to slide it accordingly um, and not have to come back to staff asking to move that limit of work another few feet. So that, that's why it's shown where it is. Um, we, we don't intend on taking the trees down if we don't need to, they wanna leave them in if possible. But we also wanna kind of give you guys a limit of work that, that's true and what, what we need in the field to do the construction. Um, Darshini has come up with a landscape plan. So any of the vegetation, any of the dune vegetation or any of the the shrubs or trees that are disturbed or that are currently dead would be replanted. And we have submitted that landscape plan as well. Um, I know that the staff had a few other comments. So at this time, I'll probably turn it over to the board and to staff and I can address any concerns that you might have. Okay, thanks, Tim. Uh, Jen, do you want to lead off with some comments? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, can you, Tim, can you address the technical comments um, from DEP? Sure, sure. Let me just bring, 
bring this. So does it, it says, does the project propose a concrete slab under so, the elevated no, garage? So the existing garage right now has a concrete slab there, obviously with uh, vertical walls. We're planning on raising the structure up with piles and they will remain a concrete slab there in order to park beneath the, uh, beneath the, the garage area. The house itself, um, below the house, they will, once the house is cribbed up, they will demolish the existing foundation, remove it, fill it in with clean sand, and that will remain sand under the house portion of um, what I'll call the new house. But in this area here where the garage is, that's an existing garage now with an existing slab in the garage. So that will remain for parking. Okay. So you're saying that the garage under the, the new guest house, that'll remain parking on a correct. slab, but the rest of the structure, it'll be sand. sand and I think correct. when, yeah, I want to listen one out. She was told that they were going to collapse the foundation in um, and, and cover it with sand. I want all of that foundation concrete out. Yeah. I, I spoke with, uh, with the applicant earlier before this meeting and specifically asked him that question. And he said that the foundation would be removed completely okay. and they would fill that area back in with sand. Okay. Um, we'd like a little bit more clarification on, on, you know, I know you said, you know, you're going to try to keep the trees, but if you could mark which ones, you know, you're yep. going to have to take down yep. and, I, and then I, the I, other ones, you know, make a note that save if can or, or yep. something along those lines, that will be great. Yeah, um, I, I can, I can revise the plan to show the adjusted limit of work, the trees closest to the house that we know definitely will come down. We can put an X through and then the other ones we can, we can put some type of circle dash circle or some type of circle around something like that with a note that just says the uh, tree to be saved if possible if not replaced okay um you addressed limit of work and you've talked to the guy you really need that 20 foot limit of work i i get what you're saying that you know doing something like that but i mean we just want to make sure that we're lessening the impact that whole areas of coastal dune i mean that entire area um so i mean the house just sits in the dune so we just want to make sure that we are impacting as little of that natural dune as possible understood um, um i think i have a question um on a landscape plan um but i'll, I'll get to the landscape plan questions later um, the lattice around the proposed pilings, obviously. I, I've, um, spoken, I've spoken with the applicant about that earlier, and um, we understand your stance, and it's off the table at this time. Okay, so then the architecturals will need to be revised to depict that, because right now the architecturals that were sent to us depict the, the, the breakaway paneling. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Tim, is there going to be any enclosed space on, on, on the ground surface for like, uh, I didn't see it in the architecturals. You're not proposing like um, an interior staircase or anything like that or an elevator. At this time, I just actually spoke to them right before the hearing. And at this time, there is no enclosure okay. there below. Okay, excellent. Um, and there's a stone wall along the the stones along Chappy. They were on the landscape plan. We just, you know, how detailed this board likes their plans or staff likes their plans. So that's great. Um, in regard to the landscape plan, Ms. Joseph, um, you think um, we just have concerns where you have. You've got the three cedar trees along the driveway, um, pretty close to that existing leaching field. Um, can they be shifted or something like that? Or do you think they'll impact the, the leaching field? We don't really see the leaching field on your plans. We don't know. You know, we were trying to guess how close those trees were to that. Yeah, that was that was my mistake. There's I was concentrating on there's some existing cedars in that area that are close to the septic field. So then I 
I wanted to replace them, but then you are correct. They are closed so that if they do grow, the roots will impact. So we can shift those three seeders somewhere and put okay. some smaller that the roots will not impact the system. Okay. Okay. And I didn't know if, you know, maybe the applicant might want to rethink the, the, the planting um, scheme now that the breakaway panels and the lattice work are kind of off the table. Or, or won't be allowed by this commission. And I didn't know um, if you wanted an opportunity to kind of relook at that landscape plan now with that in mind, that it's going to be open underneath. You'll be able to, you know, so um, I don't know your thoughts on that. If you're going to want to redesign that, that landscape plan a bit or leave it as is. Um, I probably am going to have to, revising the limit of work and now paying attention to that we actually will make an attempt to preserve more trees than what's, sh what's shown on my plan. Um, it might be good to, to revisit it. I know I also wanted to address other questions about plant species. So mm -hmm. it might be an opportunity to, to just kind of step back and revisit the planting. Okay. Um, and I mean, we can always have a discussion yeah, I mean, there's a lot of bayberry on the site being removed, um, and I'd like to see that that planted back instead of the bearberry and the switchgrass. And okay. I think without the lattice work, the bearberry doesn't obviously grow very tall. So you, you may want to be look at putting maybe some bayberry along the the, the base where that lattice would be. I, I don't know. So yeah, yeah, um, I agree. I think the bayberry would would work now that we are not thinking about the breakaway panels. So, I, I mean, I, I agree with that. Um, and okay. it's, the bayberry does seem to be thriving. I think my idea, idea was to try to have a diversity of plants and different heights, um, but I think it would be safe to, to switch out those lower plants with the, with the bayberry. Oh, you don't have to switch out all of them. Oh. We just put more bayberry oh, yeah, in. Yeah. I, I like the diversity and the, the, okay. the structure, the different structure. So I just, I wanted to see a little bit more bayberry in there. Okay. And like I said, without the lattice, I didn't know if, if the applicant wanted to kind of redesign the, the look of the front without the lattice. So, um, especially the, the whole front where it's all that big, um, just like the big sea of beach grass. So um, just a thought um, okay. and an opportunity um, for you to be able to revise that. Okay. So back to the structure, Tim, Courtney had a question for Alyssa and I that actually we didn't raise with you when he came in. Um, and I'll steal Courtney Stunder and then he can he can oh, talk about yeah, it himself. Yeah. I mean, Do you I, know what the square foot increase, not in the impervious surface, but of the structure is? I know you're saying there's a decrease, so there's no mitigation because you're decreasing the, the um, driveway, correct? The, no, the, the driveway is remaining the same. so. It, it's a it's a decrease of 23 square feet um but you know the house the decks and the garage which are all considered structures okay so you're saying that you have a 23 foot 20 23 square foot, square foot reduction yeah yeah, yeah. reduction 20 feet. yeah it's a slight reduction correct and the overall footprint, footprint. of the structure because I think what Courtney was trying to get at was, is it does it trip over that 200 square foot addition to the house? Well, the, the whole structure itself is above the velocity zone, but it, it, it is a slight reduction. It is a slight reduction? Correct. That's um, fine. And, you, mean, know I, how I can, we, and can, Tim, you know how we feel about language above the velocity zone <laughs> i can see you smiling so, so jen i will i will reserve my comments so that they're unified until my my turn as chair to comment on it so okay. um then i'll um, get into the, i think i'll get into the square footage issues okay but i think what tim's saying is there's a reduction in the in the in the structure it's all okay. how you look at structure yeah um okay. And so I think that's it for staff's comments right now until uh, unless Kevin has anything to add. I was just curious about what the drywall installation is that going to uh, impact vegetation that's established? And if so, is there a plan to uh, 
remediate that? I, I didn't it's, notice. On it, it's, the... it's going adjacent to the uh, proposed structures and disturbed areas. Okay. Thank you, Tim. I have one other question, Tim. I'm sorry. Was there any um, borings done or anything like that to be able to design the pilings? Because I remember the one that went up, the, the one that went up off of Black Beach, the new house over there, the, the old Shearer property, we call it. Um, I think those pilings had to go real deep because they were just all in dune sand. Has there any been any kind of exploration over there about um, how deep these pilings are going to have to go? I would have to defer to DJ on that. Um, I. I do not have any knowledge of any um, structural borings being done at this time, but they, they okay. might have been. He's been working closely with the architect and the builder. Okay, Mr. Bossy, do you know if that has been done? Uh, yes, we have done the geotechnical work uh, okay. for for the property. That was one of the first things we did. Uh, and to do you know how? Do you know how deep those pilings need to go off the top of your head, or could you get that information for us? Um, I can send you the report. Okay, that would be great. Yes. Uh, um, that would be, you know, important information for us to have in the record. So thank you. Um, and that's I think if Kevin doesn't have any other questions, Mr. Chairman, uh, that's it for staff's comments at the moment. Okay. Um, I'll start with Steve. you have anything that you want to ask? Thank you. It's a house I'm very familiar with having one of my favorite walks is in front of it. I thought the uh, proposed plan was very innovative, uh, re utilizing the house and, and simply lifting it with the sliding back and forth. I enjoyed reading that part of it. Um, I understand all staff's concerns, uh, but I really thought it was an a innovative approach uh, to dealing with uh, climate change. And, okay, is that, that it, Steve? That's it, sir. Okay, uh, Peter. Uh, my only comment is that it's well thought out. Okay. Um, Pat? No questions or comments. Thank you. And Kevin? Uh, no questions or comments, Mr. Chairman. Betsy? Yeah, I have a question for Jen. Jen, is this, uh, is this a mapped uh, um, barrier beach? Is this part of the, uh, part of the barrier beach system? That goes down to Black Beach. I mean, in about one second. Give me one second. I mean, I don't think it'll have any any impact on the design of the project, but I'm just curious. Almost there, Betsy. Just taking a minute. Salt Marsh, it is barrier. It is mapped as a barrier beach. Yes. Okay. And my other question, and this is, so I'm thinking of who's, none of us have been around long enough to know this, but was there fill put somewhere between mainland and Chapcoit Island at some point to build the causeway? I mean, it would probably would have been further north than here. Do you know that, Tim? I, I do not know that answer. I mean, if, if there was, I would assume it's it's much further north because I I believe uh, I believe is that the property is is a few houses to the north of this Grayson, and I can't remember who's on the other side of that little driveway there. So if there was, I, I would think it's further up towards closer towards the you know, before you get to 212 and eight associates. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I mean, this probably had this probably had some kind of glacial till underneath it at some point, and then you know, and then sand piled up on it. But I think there they, haven't, they haven't mapped as a barrier beach from where the guard house is, Betsy. To the uh, side. Um, yeah. Yeah, Correct. yeah. That's what I think. I mean, okay. 
But anyway, this is the way it's designed now. I mean, the issue is being able to have both sand and water, obviously water, but sand move freely through that system. Should have have to. Mr. Mr. Boss, is this your house? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope I hope you don't have to. I don't hope you don't never have to see water moving underneath it. But, but, but <laughs> I, should that happen, you want it to be able to do it. <laughs> that that is correct. Uh, I, I mean, we have the new wall that was installed this last year by the town. Uh, the the new sea wall. Right, and uh, I actually spoke with uh, with the hurricane that Nelly got close to us a week ago. Uh, I was speaking with some uh, neighbors who were here uh, during Bob, which I wasn't here for Bob, but they said that uh, the waves were over the causeway into, into my house, you know, about four feet uh, deep of water. Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, it's such a iconic little piece of property. And I love the home so much that, you know, my goal was to preserve the house instead of tearing it down and building a new house. So my goal was to take the existing house and raise it and try and keep architecturally everything the same because it's such a unique uh, home. It, and it is. Uh, it is. It's familiar. I know Courtney and I and Jen were around when work was done probably in 2004, 2005. And there was, Tim, you were probably involved too. And there was something about the osprey nest. And Courtney, Courtney said it wasn't just because of his name, but he wanted to make sure that there was an osprey nest. And I, and you, of course you do have an osprey pole just to the South of you now. That, that's correct. And, and in reference to uh, your question on uh, the, the fill or the buildup, uh, the the McLaughlin's Mike McLaughlin, that is the house closest to the guard shack. Right. Or the, yeah. uh, they they added fill in that property in 1968, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. Happened to speak to them, and they they built that up back in the 60s, yeah. and uh, and and hence the height of that home and and the way it's uh, the way it's positioned. Yeah, and I think north of there, at some point, Chappaquoit Island was really an island. I mean, there was a an opening there, and at some point it was filled in, and then, you know, it was all connected with the causeway. That, yeah, that's origi Originally, Chappaquoit Island was called Hog Island for a good reason. That's where the people of West Falmouth uh, summered all their hogs, and they could get them over there, and it was, it was an island. Um, yeah. Yeah, but then they, they built a causeway, but they must have had to fill for that causeway. Yeah, this is where developers come in. They can turn uh, Sal's ear into a silk purse and look at what Chapel Point is now. Anyway, that's another story. Um, <laughs> so are you done, uh, Bets? I'm done. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just, I've saved my comments till the end because um, this is, I'm very familiar with this house. Um, because back in the time uh, Betsy referred to 2002, 2003, 2004, uh, the owner at the time contracted with me to do a considerable amount of work. So I worked on that house for about two years. So I'm very familiar with the layout and I'm very much aware of this, the sand blowing. Uh, even back in 2002, you could still see uh, the water course trails from the overflow from Hurricane Bob. That house has been there for a long time. I'm not sure when it was built, but it survived the 1938 hurricane. It survived Carol and obviously survived Bob and subsequent storms. And it's a gem. So I appreciate what you're doing, sir, with um, trying to uh, keep the essence of it. It's a beautiful house inside. It's uh, you know a true cottage in the Cape Cod sense. And uh, so it looks like you're going to be a good custodian of it. Um, in terms of um, uh, some of the challenges of construction there, um, 
we the septic system was put in by us and the paved driveway was put in by us and we did a lot of re restoration of that garage as well as the interior of the house um and um there's a lot of native vegetation that survives in that very harsh uh, climate. And I would hate to see any cedar trees that could that are surviving out there be torn down because it, that that environment is so harsh that when you try to plant new stuff, it the survival rate, I think, is going to be very, very limited. Um, I can just tell you that from firsthand experience. And so if you can at all preserve the cedars that are managed to survive in that environment, you should do it. Um, and that particularly includes the, a lot of the cedars that are growing on the, on the harbor side of the house and the garage. And even though you're close up, it seems to me that um, a contractor taking care can, can save those things. In my mind, the approach in the construction approach there uh, should be to work from the road in. And so you don't have to go to the sides or the rear. Uh, you can do all the cribbing and the excavation and the removing and so on and work from the driveway and from the road into the front of the house. And that becomes your primary area of disturbance. You don't have to go too far to the sides or to the rear. That would be my suggestion. Um, the uh, as far as the expansion of the house, of course, it's all a question of, you know, what counts as structure. If I recall correctly, there is a concrete patio out where you're proposing to put the link between the existing house and the existing garage, which is now going to be a guest house. Is that correct, um, uh, Tim? It's a, is it's a, a, it's a wood. Is a wood currently there's a wood patio between the existing house and the garage, right? And I believe that wood patio sits on top of a concrete slab. Is that correct? I'm not positive on that. I believe yes, so. I, I believe so. Uh, I believe that's that. I believe that true because I, my recollection is we did we put that on. Um, so the question is, do we is that considered structure? And I'll defer to Jen. It's a concrete patio uh, with, a, with a wooden deck on top at ground level. The wood deck would be considered structure, correct? How about the uh, concrete underneath? It's not underneath. The wood deck's on top of it. I wouldn't consider the concrete slab a structure. Okay, so therefore, in your mind, there's not an issue with with putting a habitable space, a connector over that. No, because the regulations don't talk about habitable space. They only talk about additions and structure. They don't mention habitable space. Okay. So whether it's a deck or you include, like, think of it this way. If you had a deck and somebody wanted to make a three-season room or uh, make the addition, the deck an addition, you would allow that to happen under your current regs. Okay. So... Those are my only points, um, but I think you should consider a construction methodology that that um, makes that allows for construction of the house, raising of it, and all of that that can be done working from the roadside, so you don't have to uh, sacrifice those trees and other growth. Any growth that's in that whole area, all the way out to the harbor, is has survived, and it's and to Try to replace it with new plantings is going to just be a survival oh. issue. So those are my only comments. Any Tim, is there a way that maybe kind of, you know, drill down on that methodology a little bit and provide a little bit more information on that? Because you do yeah. have a pretty tight site in there. Je yeah, Jennifer, I mean, is it possible for me to comment? Oh, sure. yeah, Mr. Gossie. It is. <laughs> Um, so I met with uh, Ambrose Holmes, Ezra Ambrose, who uh, did the house on Black Beach, and they do a lot of these com complex homes, uh, uh, raising it out of uh, uh, out of uh, uh, you know on on piles. And mm -hmm. um, my my goal is 
to try not to touch any of the mature trees that are along the garage and the uh, and 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 the side of the house. Uh, I discussed it with him again today, and he felt that he could come down the driveway uh, and do all his work essentially from the driveway back. Perfect. So yeah. start at the end of the house and then work his way back. Because as you can see on the property, that anything that's exposed from the, from the, uh, from the roadside uh, has died or is dying because of the salt and the wind. And so right. all the m mature kind of trees uh, are all dying and are, are falling apart. And that the vegetation in the back of the home are really flourishing and so my discussion with him was to to tr to try his utter best to not disturb any of the veg vegetation in the back because replanting is uh, is just a disaster uh, yeah, in this oh, day yeah. and age that's, that's exactly my point and i and what was his comment what did he say and and so he, so he said to me, DJ, listen, if I can get as close to two feet around uh, the garage area, he's like, that's as tight as I will possibly try and work. He, mm -hmm. He's like, uh, he he said, we normally ask for twenty feet. He's like, but I know I can get very tight on the uh, on that garage area, and I will work with you to make sure that we don't disturb any of those uh, mature trees uh, because, you know, that was one of the big discussions because first of all, it's very costly to plant new trees. It's easy to plant new trees. The problem is that they, they rarely survive. Right. And so, exactly. you know, so it is uh, on the top of my list. Uh, we love, I love the trees in the back there and, it, and it's beautiful. And uh, I've worked with Jennifer on trying to preserve uh, uh, the back with some dune fencing. Uh, and so uh, it, it is, it is at the top of, of my priority to, uh, to save those large trees that are there. So my, my suggestion would be that um, you have um, that, that the contractor detail the methodology which he plans to employ to get this done so that uh and submit that to the commission um and that we'll we can incorporate that into an order of conditions so that we we understand what the methodology is going to be before the work starts that's sure how, you know okay. that's very fair okay and mr Bob, have... said, i do have one question um and it's probably for your contractor. Where does he propose to stage all his vehicles? Because you can't you can't park them in the road. We have all the, the boulders lining the road. Or is he going to ask? So let me rephrase that. Um, obviously, do you do you have a time frame for this project? So the goal would be to do it in the off months. It, you know, obviously. Uh, so obviously when there's very little traffic uh, issues, number one, and, uh, you know, I didn't, honestly, I have not gotten, uh, it, you know, he knows he has a crane and his work trucks will have to somehow fit in, fit in my driveway. And, uh, and uh, I would, I will talk with uh, the McLaughlin's and a couple of my neighbors and uh, uh, in, I know they're not there in the off season and see if uh, we can leave some work trucks uh, during the day on, uh, you know, in that area, you know, in their driveway area. Okay. Cause I would, I, you know, I'm very sensitive to your neighbor, Saul Pondary Burn Sanctuary and, and the issues that they've had on their properties. So I just want to make sure that Saul Pond's property won't be impacted by the, the construction. With you know, with the the parking of construction vehicles on on their right. property or anything like that, so we we want to be. Yep, you know. and we've 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 seen that with the turnarounds and the. <laughs> I I I I've lived it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know, I know, so, I know. I mean, truthfully, um, uh, you know, okay. I, I honestly don't see a big issue if they had to uh, do access, particularly when they get into doing the house. If they came in off the road where those boulders are, because because that's a limited area, um, and um, 
you know, could that that's an area that could be replanted and restored in a minimum amount of effort. So that gives you some flexibility. And yes, there's enough room. What, other than that, you can also park smaller vehicles along the side of the road on the, along that border. We did that all the time. Yeah, it's according Don't to you know, your head, it's, it's, but, you know, we did it off season too. So, yeah, but you won't be able. The town's not going to allow that anymore. Okay. Well, okay. The so town road, Mr. Bossy. Town road. <laughs> no, we can't okay. sit there and say. So, are the there any other? Sitting. Are there any other questions or comments? And if not, I'll call for a motion. I'll bet Tim wants Tim wants a continuance. I'll bet. And so Jen's going to get us a date. And when I have a date, it. and a yes from Tim, and a yes from Mr. Bossy, then I'll make a motion. Yes. Um, Tim, uh, the next available would be the 22nd. The, the 15th is just it's too busy. I'm on the 15th. We can't do the 15th. No, I can't put another one on for them. I just, I have, I have two and four. I have to put on at the end of tonight. So I know. Sorry. All right. No we what is it? Zoom? Tim, we get to see you twice today. Three weeks, three times in a row. I know. I miss you guys. I know. I miss you too. We miss you too. So anyway, I'll make a motion to continue this till September 22nd. Do we have a second? second. Okay, we have a motion. We have a motion in a second to continue this till September 22nd. Betsy. Glad filter I. Bird, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Uh, Pat. Parasite. Peter. Walsh. Hi. And Steve. Pat and I. Motion carried. It's continued to the 22nd. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. Looks like an interesting Thank project. You. Thank you. Have a great Tim, night. Are you done for the night? Yeah, I'm done for the night. Have a great weekend. Okay. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Good night. We're ready for the next one. So, uh, Tara and Bjorn Lake. 165 Lakeshore Drive, East Falmouth, for permission to restore the buffer to an inland bank. And who yes. do we have to present the project? Courtney, I'm working on it. I'm promoting Teresa Sprague up. I am promoting Mike Borselli up, if I can do this correctly. Where, where's Mike? Oh, there's Mike. Uh, I think I did it. Okay. There's Teresa. Justin, why doesn't it look like Mike's? Mike just came, appeared, but there's no picture and no no sound. Mike, are you there? Hang on. Ooh. He's showing up, but he's not. He's, there's something happening here with Mike. Justin. There he, there he is. is. Mike has just magically appeared. I had to make a, a, I had to make a grand entrance. I had to make a grand entrance. It's been so long since I've been here. Yeah, wait one second. Justin, could you move Christina back into the attendees for me, please? I'm not having that that, that capability anymore. Justin. Join Liam. Can you please come help me? Uh -oh. Liam, can you come help me? I have no idea if I'm this, on this thing. I just, I have to. Just okay. Um. So, are we all done with this interlude, or can we get along? Zoom, Zoom is giving me a long. weird delay. Okay, right. we're good. So, Mr. Borselli, you're on deck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Members of the commission, I'm, I wonder if you miss me as much as you miss Tim. It's been a while. I hope oh, yes, <laughs> Mike, we missed you too. I've only had a few RDAs for whatever reason, but this is the first notice in probably half the summer. We figured more. you're not doing any work. I'm killing myself. I don't know why I don't have any notices of intent. Um, anyway, for the record, Mike Boselli, I represent the applicant along with Teresa Sprague. Uh, where we uh, represent uh, Tara and Beyond Lake, who own a property at 165 Lakeshore Drive, which is on Jenkins Pond. 
with your permission, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to share my screen. You have the permission. Thank you. Uh, you should be uh, viewing a plan of existing conditions of the property. Um, as I said, it has a frontage on Jenkins Pond to the west. Jenkins Pond is land under a water body on the shoreline directly adjacent to the edge of the pond is by definition the, an inland bank and the top is um, highlighted in an orange color. There's a small sandy beach. <clears throat> the property is a single family dwelling. It has a, a, a paved driveway on the street. It has uh, landscape timbers and, and stone uh, stepping stones down through a lawn area. There's a fire pit, a canoe rack, um, a gravel walkway and the, the deck associated with the house. These are the existing conditions. Your regulations uh, are specific if a wetland resource is within, also within a zone two or of a, for a public uh, drinking source. If, if that's the case, the no disturbance zone A from the top of an inland bank becomes 100 feet instead of the typical 75. So we've shown the 100 foot no disturbance zone. Um, in the staff report, and I've spoke to Alyssa about this, there were some comments about um, the no disturbance zones. We had a conversation on the phone today, and I think I we clarified things. Uh, she agreed with me when we read the regulation about the inland bank being in the no, uh, being in the zone two. So I think I have the inland bank accurately shown. I did not show land under water body. I can. I'm happy to revise the plan, but it's not as restrictive. It would also be 100 feet but it'd be slightly, le slightly less impactive. The project we're proposing is, it's a moot point regardless of the no disturbance zones. And I'll get into that in a second. Um, the proposed project. The proposed project is on this uh, page. And this page shows um, all of the existing conditions remain the same at the street. This project is basically a, um, a landscaping in a, in a buffer, uh, I'm gonna use the word renovation, where uh, significant lawn areas will be uh, replaced with planting. We're proposing to remove the fire pit, remove the canoe rack, um, remove the stepping stones and make this slope easier to navigate by putting in um, some uh, stone risers. This is predominantly a design by Blue Flax Design. I'm just touching on the highlights and I'm gonna turn it over to, to Teresa. But there's a significant area of mitigation planting shaded on my plan in green. Um, there is a very low profile, less than three feet or less landscape uh, wall proposed to level out some of the area. If you've been on the site, it's a, it's, it's a moderately sloping yard and uh, having the ability to have a little bit of flat lawn area here would be beneficial to the uh, property owner. Um, the staff report, Matt, uh, items, um, there are a couple things um, that uh, Alyssa had pointed out that I think are, are minor and can be uh, worked out. For instance, we did not, we did not uh, show on the plan, um, I'm sharing a photo with you, we did not show this stone area or this AC unit on our plan. We're happy to do that. Um, there's a 20 inch oak tree that there was a question whether or not that would be removed. That's not proposed to be removed, that will remain. There's a very small um, uh, fence in this brush area that serves no real purpose. And we, we there was a question as to whether or not that needed, uh, that was uh, proposed to remain. It was recommended that it be removed and we're certainly willing to remove that to uh, mitigate against uh, wildlife, um, you know, any wildlife that may be tra traversing the area. I think that sums up the general uh, items I'm going to unshare and I'm going to turn it over to Teresa for the details. And then we're both here to answer questions. Thanks, Mike. Um, good evening, everyone. Teresa Sprague with Blue Flex Design. Um, with um, the chair's permission, can I share my screen? She said, he said yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I thought I'd unmuted myself. Okay. So I believe you're looking at our proposed um, landscape planting plan. So the, the basic goals of, the, of this project are to better protect the wetland resource area while providing the property owners a little bit more of a level usable space um, for 
recreation just directly off the deck. So as Mike pointed out, we're proposing to plant out. Um, we do have to update, I think um, Mike's plan uh, dated July 26, 2021, shows the proper um, wetland buffer zones and resource areas. This is a plan, this is based on a plan from Falmouth Engineering that was dated January 12th. So we do need to update our site plan so that we're showing this accurately, but this is actually the 100 foot A zone um, from the um, Inland Bank, I believe. Um, so what we're proposing to do is to plant out this existing steep, steeply sloping lawn. Um, we're proposing to plant this with eight trees and 105 um, native shrubs. Um, we are proposing to remove the existing stepping stones. If you attempted to walk down this slope, um, it's, it's pretty um, sketchy, uh, slippery, dangerous. We're just trying to provide um, safe access um, down to the area. As Mike pointed out, the fire pit the kayak rack or the canoe rack will be removed. This wall, there's an existing retaining wall here um, that's retaining this upland portion. Is in, It's currently failing. Um, so we are proposing to rebuild that basically in place and in kind. Um, we would like to continue to maintain um, a little bit of an area down along the edge of the pond. Again, just for recreation, this is slightly sloping, but not as steeply sloping as other areas that we're proposing to plant out. Um, we are proposing a, um, a low retaining wall just to, to allow us to grade this area. Obviously the gravel walkway will be removed. There's existing concrete blocks um, throughout this area that we would be proposing to remove, replant the area. Fescue lawn would be um, planted um, just below the deck so there would be an opportunity to step off of the deck into this small lawn area, it's approximately 300 square feet. And then walking down a couple of um, steps here to get down to the in-ground um, granite risers to lead down to the beach um, and the water. As Mike pointed out, there is a 20 inch oak tree that will be remaining. There's some existing rhododendrons along the Northern property line that will remain in place, as well as a witch hazel, um, existing witch hazel that's um, just to the east of the shed. I'm sorry, to the west of the shed that would also remain in place. There's a lot of um, non-native, um, there's hydrangeas, et cetera. Those will be removed. They'll either be transplanted out to the front on the street side of the lot, or they'll be discarded and um, the native vegetation will be replanted in its place. So I'm happy to answer any questions about the replanting or the landscaping project. Thank you, Teresa. Um, Jen, do you have some comments? Um, yes, I have a few comments. Um, Mike, I talked to Alyssa at the end of the day. Um, and as much as I, I really appreciate you trying to, to show that 100 foot buffer to that inland bank, uh, the inland bank, you do a 100 foot buffer, um, from freshwater wetlands bordering a water body within a zone two of a public water supply and not the inland bank. So it's going to be the landward edge of that pond or the wetland. Okay. Um, it's a small, it's a small like technical ish technical matter. It's not going to impact the project at all, but we want the correct buffer. So it'd be 75, 25 for your inland bank and 100 feet from, from your um, either the water's edge or that wetland. Okay. Okay. I know it's kind of small and picky, but, um, it could but be I really a future appreciate project. you give us a hundred foot buffer to that inland bank, Mike. It could be a future project, so we should have it shown right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Teresa, a nice plan. You know, at first when I first looked at it, I was like, oh, but no. The more I looked at it, it was it was a nice plan. It it fits the site. Um, I don't have any concerns with those little steps because they're kind of coming off of that cobbly wall. Um, that first set of steps you have, I noticed you, there's no way to kind of easily transition down there. Mm -hmm. So um, at first I was a little concerned with the steps, but I'm not because they're just going to be part of that landscape feature. They're not going to be part of the house or anything like that. So, so that's good. Um, I think in the staff report, um, Alyssa, Probably, actually, um, the shed we noticed was um, Mark had noticed years ago on some older files that it was was unpermitted, and he you know had made a note to the commission like eleven years ago to seek enforcement. What we'd like you to do is just 
label an area of your restoration as mitigation for the shed. And we're going to call it, you know, staff would be good with that. The shed can remain, it'll be permitted and we're fine with that. Um, the only other thing I had was, Mike, I was trying to look something up. Did you talk about the dock? So when we went out there, we saw the dock and the aerials. When we went out there, there was no dock, but we did distinctly can see it in the aerials. Um, yes. Please advise your clients that it can't go back in the water until it is properly permitted, and we can work with them to get it permitted. I did because I know I think you said what was that? Sorry to interrupt. I I noticed the dock. The dock was in place when we did the survey, and I checked records and there were no permits. So I, I advised the client to remove the dock um, and um, leave it out of the water until such time as he applies for permits. So he did remove it. Um, he's storing it up under his deck and he knows not to reinstall it unless he pursues permits. Yeah, I know that we have these small illegal docks all over Jenkins Pond. So, you know, I'd prefer to work with the applicant, get it permitted for them. And then, you know, we won't have to worry about it in the future. Um, Understood. Um, and I think they were just, yeah, the small little things that Alyssa wanted added to the plan, um, as well as the steps to the beach. Yeah, just small um, additions to the plan and everything. Get those buffer zones corrected. And I think that's it for the staff. Okay. Uh uh, Kevin, do you have any anything to add to this? No, Mr. Chairman, I don't. Uh, usually we don't see projects where uh, you're having plant things added and really nothing to, uh, on the other end of that. So it's nice to see that. Okay. Thank you. So we'll go to comments by the commissioners. Uh, we'll start with you, Betsy. Okay. My comment is this is a nice little project. It'll... It'll be nice. It'll it'll tidy up that area and provide a, a nice buffer to the to the pond, which is very low, actually. Mm. The water table's low. Mm -hmm. Despite all the rain. Well, we haven't had much rain. They've no, had lots either. of rain north of the canal, but not we haven't had much. So maybe it'll fill up tonight. Um <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Anything else, Betsy? No, that's it. Okay. Um, Kevin? Uh, no comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Pat? No comments. Thank you. Peter? Peter, we can't hear you. You got to unmute yourself. You got to unmute yourself. He knows. He's looking. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we did it, uh, discuss the small fence on the property. Uh, Mike said they're taking it away. Okay. Yep. Okay. No further questions. Okay. Uh, Steve. No questions. Thank you. And uh, the chair has no questions. And the only comment is I think it's a, a good project and it tidies up uh, a nice situation. So, um, I entertain a motion to um, for action. And we want to make a motion. I'll, I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement with the provision. Well, um, it can be a condition, I guess. Mm -hmm. No, I, actually, Mike. Yes. <laughs> and Teresa, let's make sure we get corrected plans into Jen before we vote this. Understood. Okay, so your motion is to close the hearing. Close the hearing and take it under advisement. Okay, do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there, are there any comments uh, in the chat room? I'm sorry, I didn't ask that in the last hearing, but are there any comments in the chat room? There's no comments in the chat, Courtney. Okay, so with that, um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take the vote for uh, Betsy. Gladfelter, I. Bird, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Maury. I'm sorry, Pat. Harris, I. Peter. Walsh. Walsh, I. And Steve. Pat and I. Okay, the motion carries unanimously. 
Thank you very much. Thank you all. Have a good night. So nice now, to see both of you. See you soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving along. Um, the next, next we're into continued hearings under a notice of intent. And our first up is uh, By Byron Missif and Susan Keller, 72 Pheasant Lane, East Falmouth, for permission to expand and alter an existing licensed fixed pier and ramp. Uh, Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting an additional continuance until October 20th. So, so moved. We have a motion from, uh, we have a motion, do we have a second? Our second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to continue this to October 20th. 28th. Okay. 20th. No, no, 20th. 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 I'm sorry, October 20th. I'm a little hard of hearing, but that's okay. Um, all right, so the motion is to continue this to the 20th of October. All right, um, Betsy. Gladfelter, I. Uh, Bird, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. More, uh, Pat. Harris, I. Peter. Walsh, I. Steve. I'm I. Okay, motion carries unanimous. Let's just continue to the 20th. All right, moving along. The next one, Gracchi, is already continued. So we move on to Cl Greg Clancy. Clancy Construction, 71 Alder Lane, North Falmouth, Mass. For permission to expand an existing garage, remove and replace five native trees, and for all associated excavation. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I promoted Tom Bunker up to present his project. Okay, welcome, Tom. All right, thank you. Um, good to be here again. Uh, I think uh, I'll start off by saying I'm going to request a continuance on this uh, until possibly the 22nd. Uh, but I actually want to talk, ask Jan, have we, has this hearing actually been opened or have we just continued it? I can't even remember. No, it's just, it hasn't been opened. It hasn't, hasn't been opened. Been. So you're not going to open it tonight? No, I, I will. I, I will just to uh, introduce. It's been, been kind of a long, long history, there was a continuance for some reasons. And at one point, the client thought they might uh, uh, drop the project. Uh, and then we continued it only to uh, permit a, uh, an addition that had not been permitted by conservation. Then just just beginning of this week, or no, last week, uh, they said that actually we'll go ahead now with the, with the garage. Um, so it's kind of been, you know, off and on. So I'll I'll open this, um, and I will. Oh, where'd you go? I'll, I'll share this if I may, um, just to show you a couple of pictures, and then 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 we'll discuss the continuance after that. So I'll, I'll share my screen now, if I may. All right, go ahead. Um, let me see. Share there it is. Share the screen now. Okay, you have that, but actually I'll go to some Google aerial photos. This is part of the uh, part of the issue on the uh, staff comments, their last comment about the um, aerial photos. I know uh, Alyssa has looked, looked at some of these and I downloaded some. This is Google Earth. Uh, this photo is from March, 2012. This is the property right here. And I can I can back up a little bit and, and tell you that the um, this the, the front yard of this whole house is in the flood zone. Even though about 250 feet from the marsh, we're inland from Alder Lane, is at the bottom of the page down here, and it's on the corner of Redbud. And this entire uh, area here is in the flood zone. It's elevation 15. And the biggest issue is that uh, along where these trees are and along in front of the house is. Uh, uh, slope more than 10%, so it's a coastal bank. Uh, in the process of this, and I hadn't uh, done all my proper homework, an earlier staff report they said that this, I'll, I'll go to, uh, this is a 2012, uh, this is later in 2012, I'm so blurry, I'm not sure, but this is in June of 2014, and lo and behold, this, 
this uh, hexagonal or whatever uh, screen or glass bin porch has appeared uh, in this location. And I'll, I'll just point out quickly that from there to here, there's, there's no tree here, no particular vegetation in this location to begin with. And you see where this, this was built. So part of this project, uh, sort of a request that was added just in the last couple of weeks is to uh, get a retroactive permission for this addition right here to stay. And I can go back to the 2012 and there's like, this is a, I think it's just a solarium on, on the back of the back of the house right here. Uh, and then in 2014, it's more of an addition here also. And so that addition in, in the back, perhaps the solarium itself, but then also this, this uh, more substantial addition um, must be approved or I'd like to have it approved. I'll go to our drawing now. So you can see the orientation has changed a little bit, um, but you can see that we have uh, the flood zone is up. I can show you on a, on a locust map here, first where we are. Uh, Red Bud Lane, the Alder Lane, Alder Lane makes a loop in here and this corner inside is, is uh, salt marsh. And this of course is part of Wild Harbor River, uh, which, is, which is a river. Uh, and the riverfront area emanates from 200 feet from the edge of the salt marsh. And so we have this line right here, this line with RF in it is the outer riparian zone limit of riverfront area in the lot. So not, none of the work is proposed within that, but then uh, it's a fairly extensive flood zone, which comes up basically right up to the front of the house along, along here. And uh, the, the yard slopes up from the driveway. There's a, you know, a small retaining wall, then it slopes up in, in, in the uh, <clears throat> left or east side of the lot, it, it levels off some. So this is not coastal bank, um, but the, this line type we have here with the triangles is coastal bank. Uh, no telling, here, here's the uh, porch area to be permitted and there's no telling really what the contours were like before uh, this was put in, although, uh, of course, I can go to that uh, so-called 1975 topo map that, uh, you know, I love to show people, um, see what the slope was like. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, maybe we don't have to go there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and actually, this was discovered because uh, the septic upgrade was done. Actually, there probably are, are contours there. The septic upgrade was done, I think, by uh, Chris Costa back in the in, uh, back in the early days and that probably does have some contour information uh, for placing this right uh, under or near a coastal bank. Um, the patio was added at some time, nobody knows, I'm sure some people know, uh, but this patio encroaches over the property line on the inland side of the house onto uh, land owned by the homeowners association and uh, the owners talked with the uh, association and they said that they, the, the uh, patio must be removed from, from this location. So we cut back to uh, along the property line and this area, the, there's lawn and, and all in there, but that will be um, filled back in with loam. And I suppose, uh, um, drought tolerant grass seed mix and all in there. Um, the association didn't say that has to be planted with native shrubs or anything like that, but uh, at least just to put, put loam in there. Um, staff had a question if these dry wells are existing or proposed. These are proposed dry wells. It's for the, uh, the, the roof area. One, one, one pipe going from the rinse station that's there now to drain that into there. This deck is coming off. Um, this uh, rinse station will drain into a dry well as well as you know, one side of the garage and the other side of the garage will go into this other dry well. 
Um, <clears throat> We're getting into this location. I hadn't even noticed when we got the uh, back in the end of July when I got the um, the uh, DEP file number. Of course, it said at the bottom of it that uh, DEP has an issue with work on this coastal bank because it might destabilize it. And uh, of course, I had that in my file for about a month, but uh, Alyssa brought it to my attention today. Um, so we we need time to uh, come up with some way of stabilizing this bank. I mean, I don't think it's unstable enough to, to cause any concern, but to satisfy you and the DEP, uh, we will have to do something proactive uh, uh, to this. So um, with, with that, I'd like to ask for a continuance for three weeks. And in that time, hopefully next week, I can talk with I can meet with, with Jen and, and any other staff that would like to talk to me about uh, what we could do there. There was also staff questions if we are doing mitigation planting or, or at least not mitigation, but mitigation planting is not required, but um, additional native planting to in, in, in improve the, uh, the zone B, uh, possibly to improve it for this patio being built, but also to improve it for for the uh, garage expansion, if that if that can be uh, approved. So anyway, I'd like to request the continuance, and I will I will contact uh, uh, Jen um, tomorrow. Uh, hope I can set up a meeting for next week sometime. I will stop sharing. Okay. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, Jen. Yes, Courtney, can you hear me? Yep. All right, there's something going on with my laptop right now. I guess okay, she... we had just lost her. We could hear her and now she's gone. Um, uh, Kevin, while we're waiting for her to reappear, can you, um, can you fill us in? Do you have anything you can add in this? Yeah, let me see here. I am just looking for the staff report. Courtney, if you want to start with the commission comments, I can uh, pull this up. Um, okay, uh, let's see. I have the staff report for this particular project. Do you want me to read it? Actually, uh, yeah, if you want to go through any points that you think are particular. Right, that... Staff comments, technical comments from the from uh, DEP. Uh, quote, it appears that the project as proposed will not meet performance standard for Coastal Bank 310 CMR 1030.6. Um, excavation activities are proposed on Coastal Bank for the construction of the garage foundation. Excavation of a coastal bank may have an adverse effect on the stability of the coastal bank. The project must meet the performance standard for coastal banks, 310 CMR 1030. Okay, that's, that's exactly what um, Tom was alluding to right there with uh, the stabilization of the okay. bank and the work on the bank itself. Okay, and then it says, are there two dry wells on a plan existing or proposed, and I think that was answered. Yes, it was. Okay, and uh, although mitigation is not required, are any improvement planning is being offered? Section 10.187E5. Hey, I'm back. Hey, Jen, welcome back. Sorry about that, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden my computer's like low battery, it was plugged in, it just went blank, so I apologize. <laughs> We just Morning. carried right on, Jen. I know. You don't need me. Oh, well, we like, me, we well, like you, though. So what I'll do is let me finish with the staff reports, and we'll come back to you, Jen. All right. So then uh, it says, after looking at aerial photos, it appears that an addition was constructed and the sunroom was enlarged and so forth without a permit, and that was addressed. So it seems that the gravel area where the AC units uh, are located were also added without a permit. So those are staff's observations. Um, Jen, 
Do you have anything? Um, no, probably just what's covered in the staff report. I do have one thing though. Tom, do you have a permission letter from the association? I know you're removing the patio from their from their property, but we kind of need permission from them. Do you actually work on their property, even if it's removing the patio? Is that something you could get from the association? Um, we do. I think I think I I thought I'd sent it in. Oh, okay. I can yeah, double check. If not, I can. We have, we have a letter that's that basically letter says they you know the association has a 15 foot setback from a side property line. So they agreed to the reduced side setback, which is not a your issue, it's a zoning issue kind of. But in that same letter, they're the ones that said you must remove the patio. Uh, and I suppose by saying they must remove the patio, that must give them the right to do the work to remove the patio. So yes, I think I'm pretty sure if not, we'll send it to you. Okay, thank you very much. Hey, any other? So you're all set then, Jen? Yes, I I think Tom's gonna we'll meet with Tom and address the other issues as well. Um, I don't think the bank is going to destabilize, but we'll we'll work with Tom on on that. Um, we'll work on some improvement plantings, and we'll kind of figure out what happened with the reconstruction that looks like it wasn't permitted. So, okay, all right, Betsy, do you um, have anything? I do have a comment, um, Tom. Yes, there are two large oaks. I think one's eighteen inch and one's twelve inch that you're planning to remove. And I think you're probably planning to remove it because it would be easier to change the grade. Yes. But if you didn't remove them, that would go a long way to stabilizing that slope. It's, it's in a, uh, yes, I can look at that. They're, they're, they're near the bottom of where we have some, I could you know do a tree well type of thing on three sides. To, to try to keep them. I know you would like to have 10 feet from a, from a work limit from, I mean, 10 feet from vegetation, but I can see what I can do about that. I'll, I'll discuss that with, with the staff. It, it's actually the, the 18 inch oak. Yeah. Both of them, the 12 and 18 are, are, are barely, barely being filled against. Barely what? Bare, barely having much fill placed. Oh yeah, yeah. Into. So I mean, it'd be nice if you could yeah. modify things and keep those trees. Those are nice trees. Yep, yeah. That, that's all. Okay, um, Kevin, do you have anything to um, add? Kevin O'Brien. Kevin O'Brien. Oh, no, no questions. Okay, um, Pat? No comments, thank you. And Peter? No comments or questions. And uh, Steve? No questions, thank you. And um, I don't have any either. I think, uh, it, you know, there's some minor issues. But it looks like you guys have got it worked out. Now, are we looking for a continuance, I believe? Is that correct? The 29th, is that what you want, Tom? No, 22nd. I'm oh, Jen? You might be too late for the 22nd. Can't be full already. No, twenty second will be fine, Tom. Okay. At the request so of the applicant, at the request of the applicant, I'll make a motion to continue this hearing <laughs> till September twenty second. We have a second. O'Brien, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Are there any uh, any comments in the chat room? No? Okay. No, Mr. Chairman. Okay, no comments in the chat room. So there, it's time for the vote. Uh, Betsy? Rodfelter, aye. Bird, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. And Steve? Patton, aye. Motion is carried unanimously. We have a continuance till the 22nd of uh, what, uh, uh, September? Correct. Okay. Thank you very much, right. uh, Tom. Thank you. Good night. Bye, Tom. All right. Pizza time. Okay. We have the next one. And this is Carol Efron Flyer 
55 Moon Penny Lane, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to conduct hardscape and landscape improvements and to install mitigation plannings. Now this hearing has already been open, so what is the quorum? All of us. All of us who are here now are on the quorum. Okay. Guys, Justin, I need you to move Raul up into the panelists. I don't have any functionality right now as host. Thank you. Uh -huh. Good evening. Raul. Good week. Good evening, Raul. You're on deck. Good evening. For the record, Raul Lissardi from Cape and Islands Engineering. Um, so yes, like um, um, Bird said, this project was heard and it was continued for um, kind of touching back on some of the details for the mitigation plantings and some of the reloc relocation of the um, Rugosa Rose that's on the property that was called out to be removed. So the plan was revised. Um, the Rugosa Rose is now have been shifted to the location between the proposed edge of lawn and the proposed mitigation. So the area that the Rugosa is now taking that used to be mitigation got shifted around to the other areas of mitigation. Um, so that was the change from last um, hearing that the project was presented um, to this hearing. Um, so there was changes to the edges of lawn to allow the space for the Rugosa rows and some shifting around of the mitigation areas. But the areas of mitigation stay the same. The 200 square foot of Rugosa rows stays the same. It just got reshifted around. Okay. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Okay, thank you, Raul. Um, Jen, Jen, do you have any comments? No, Mr. Chairman, this is exactly what the board wanted to see from last the last time we met, so. Okay, Kevin? No comment, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, uh, comments from the commissioner. Uh, I'll start with you, Steve. No comments, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, Peter? Jen, were all the uh, changes in the drawings appropriate? Yes. No further questions. Pat? No comments, thank you. Um, Kevin? Uh, no, no comments, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Betsy? Yeah, I have a comment. Um, Jen, can we make a finding that there was a patch of 200 square feet of Ragosa Rose that was is being shifted? But if the applicant wants to switch to a different uh, plant, then that can be done done with with just an administrative approval. Yeah, you can vote whatever you, if they want to make that a, a condition. That's fine. Yeah, I mean there is something about what well, else might there be, and and those. Whatever else he has for mitigation, I, I don't know that the Ragosa Rose is going to look that good. I mean, they're obviously trying to improve the look of that area. So just so that they don't have to come back, they can just go yeah, to that's fine. Yeah, yep. that's okay. We can handle that. Yeah. Okay. You, nothing else, Betsy? You're all set. No, that's it. Okay. And I have no comments. Um, are there any comments in the chat function? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Well, I filter. We have a second. And second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Betsy. Glad filter, aye. Uh, Bird, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. We have a unanimous motion in favor of closing the hearing and taking it under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye, Raul. Bye. So we're moving along. We're now into the next aspect here. Continued hearings under an enforcement order. Kevin and Christiana Doniger, 59 Shorewood Drive, East Falmouth. Unpermitted construction of a patio 
and unpermitted reconstruction of a deck. Jen. Courtney, Ms. Doringer was in this hearing. There was a technical issue. She was removed from the hearing and then she cannot rejoin. I've been, that's who I've been emailing. If you see me typing, we've been trying to get her back into the meeting. Unfortunately, there's no way she can get back in. She does want to address the board tonight, but there's, there's no way. And it's too late for me to like contact her with the uh, IT was just like, can she call it? I'm like, it's too late. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's continue the hearing because it is an enforcement hearing. Let's continue the hearing to September 22nd. And if that date does not work for, um, for the, for the resident, then we'll just continue it again. Okay. She was one of the first people in attendees tonight. So they, they were here to address the issue. It, it, it was just a glitch when I was trying to, there's a delay on my end when I'm moving somebody in and sometimes it captures the person underneath them and, Mr. Orange didn't realize she wasn't on mute. So then she was obviously asking somebody to help and it was disrupting the other hearings. And I did not have the functionality to return her back to an attendee. Okay. So it was the, the technical issue was on a, a, a Zoom. Okay. So we need to continue this to the 22nd of uh, September. Is yes. That- and I'll, 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 you know, email them this evening. And if that date doesn't work, then we'll continue again on the 22nd. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to continue this hearing till September 22nd. Rod Felter. Do we have a second? Rod and second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to continue this to the 22nd, and I assume there are no comments in the chat? No. Okay, so um, Betsy. Rod Felter, aye. Bird, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Uh, Steve. And I. Okay, motion is carried. It'll be continued to the 22nd. Next, we have Charlotte Mills Siler, 0 Nashawina, Lot 2A, West Falmouth, Mass. Failure to install mitigation and restoration plannings according to Mass DEP 253969. Uh, Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, um, the applicant is requesting a continuance until Hang on. Um, sorry, I just blanked on which one. Hang on. Uh, I think it's the 29. Hold on, please. No, I'm sorry, the 15th. We're going to continue to the two that I'm going to continue to the 15th. That would be the same for Siler. On Correct. Friday. Yeah. I'll, we'll treat that separately. Okay. So I'll, so make we, a, I'll, I'll make a motion, motion to, to continue. Yeah, go ahead. I'll make a motion to continue to the 15th. We have a this second. is lot two number zero. Yeah. We have a second. 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 And there's nothing in the chat. Okay. Uh, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. Uh, Betsy. Brad Felter, aye. Bird, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat, aye. Okay. It is motions carried. It's continued to the 15th. Uh, next, Matthew and Rosalind Seiler. 10 Nashawina Street, West Falmouth, fair to install mitigation and restoration plannings, according to Mass DEP 253968. Um, Jen. September 15th. Make a motion to continue this to September 15th. We have a second. Or a second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to continue, continue this to the um, 15th. And I assume there's nothing in the chat. Hearing nothing, seeing nothing, I'll call for the vote. Uh, Betsy. Wadfelder, aye. Bird, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Bur- uh, Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. Okay, motion is carried. It is continued to the 15th. 
And so now we're on to the board will consider any matters not reasonably anticipated by the chair. And uh, Jen, the Huey tour. Yes. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to just lock these times down so I can let who we know. So next week, Peter, what did you want? You wanted the Thursday time slot from 11 to noon? Yes. Okay. Does it, Can anybody else join Peter Thursday, next Thursday from 11 to noon at the Huey site? I can be there. Okay. So we'll do. Peter, Pat, and Courtney. And then Kevin O'Brien, that leaves you. When do you want to schedule your site visit, Kevin? When are you, what did you, are they all available or what? No, yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday from 10 to 11 or from 2 to 3. Next Wednesday from one to two or two to three or next Thursday from nine to ten. Let's do next Tuesday, the seventh from uh, two to three. Two to three. Is that OK? That's fine. I'll join you on that one, Kevin. OK, so am I missing anybody? So Pat, one, two, three, four. Steve is five. Jamie. Jamie and Maury, and I'll just contact Jamie and find out when he wants to go. Okay. Because Jamie's, Jamie's um, schedule is a little restrictive, so um, I'll just, I'll work with Jamie on Jamie's um, site visit. Okay. Sounds right. good. Oh, okay. and everybody got our updated schedule. I know some of you, Peter, Betsy, we're looking for an updated schedule. Yes, thank you. Not a problem. Okay. Anything else? Uh, any other administrative tasks that have to be performed at this point? Not tonight, Courtney. Are you okay. entertaining and a motion? Are you yes, entertaining you a motion to adjourn? Be. A motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Paris second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adjourn, and I assume there's no discussion or anybody in the chat room to want no. to raise questions or speak. So therefore, Betsy. Gladfelter I. Bird I. Kevin. O'Brien I. Um, Pat. Harris I. Peter. Walsh I. And last but not least, Steve. Pat and I. <laughs> we have a motion to, there was we, a we are adjourned. <laughs>